Hello everyone, welcome to DevOps Certification Course with the CAD Guild. In this session video, you will be learning about Version Control System, VCS. Version Control System, VCS, is also known as Software Configuration Management System, SCM. Sometimes people make a mistake by calling Software Configuration Management, i.e. SCM, as Configuration Management, i.e. CM. This is okay, but in DevOps it imparts a different meaning as configuration management, infrastructure as a code management, or system configuration management. Hence, it is always better to refer to version control system as either VCS or SCM systems. Let's understand what a version control system is. Let's take a scenario from the project we are working on and the project contents are nothing but development files. Let's say that the project consists of files called AC, BC, and CC. Let us see how the work process flows if you or your team not using version control system. Let us say there are three developers working on the project, that is, developer 1, developer 2, and developer 3, who are working soul-heartedly towards the success of the project. Let's say developer 1 is working on feature 1. Developer 2 is working on Feature 2, and Developer 3 is working on Feature 3, respectively. In order to implement their features, the developers will modify the project files AC, BC, and CC. Now, all the three files present in the network collaborate in some network location, such that all the three developers can access the files whenever they want. Now, let us see what developers will do. Firstly, Developer1 copies AC, BC, and CC files from the network location to his local drive. Developer2 also copies AC, BC, and CC file from the network location to his local drive. Developer3 also copies AC, BC, and CC file from the network location to his local drive. Now, Developer1 starts working on the AC file. He has made some changes and saved the file as AC1 and uploads it in the network location. Such that Developer2 and Developer3 can see the changes that Developer1 has made and build their changes on top of that file. In the network location, the AC file becomes AC1. Now, Developer2 is working on the BC and CC files and made some changes to the files and named them as BC2 and CC2 and uploads his files to the network location. Both the BC and CC files in the network location becomes BC2 and CC2. Now Developer3 doesn't have a look at the files in the network location and he made changes to all of his files and changed them as AC3, BC3 and CC3. Now he pushes the changes to the network location. The files in the network location will get changed to AC3, BC3, and CC3. And these are the latest files available in the network location. The changes made by Developer1 are lost because the changes made by Developer1 are overridden by Developer3. Because Developer3 was not aware of the changes in AC and there is no way to tell him. Maybe Developer1 might have sent him an email to Developer3 about the changes he made. But Developer3 might have forgotten about the email, or he did not check, or he just hates Developer1 and ignored his email. The changes made to BC2 and CC2 files are also overridden. Now Developer2 is pretty angry because his changes are lost. This is just maybe one day event. If this happens every day, then you don't know who is working on what, what are all the changes going, what is the history of changes, who made the changes and why they made the changes. Hence these problems can be solved by implementing version control systems. Version control systems provide some of the following basic features. 1. Versioning. It maintains versions for the files. Suppose if there is a file called AC and if someone made changes to this file, it becomes AC version 1. Again, if somebody makes changes to that modified file, it becomes AC version 2. All these versions are available for access. 
so you can still see what is there in version 1 and what is there in version 0. This is called version history. 2. History. This feature gives you the record of changed messages like who made the changes, when did they make the changes, why did they make the changes. All these information is available in the version control system. Also, you can see the evolution of your project. 3. Backups. It also provides backups. If you have a central repository for maintaining these files with version controls and a history, then that means it is a backup place. You can also create a backup with the help of your operations team with the hard disk on which these versions are saved. If there is any outage or disaster and your servers are lost, you can restore from your backup feature. 4. Restoring If somebody made a change to AC as AC3 and then realize it is a disastrous change with a lot of bugs and it is not at all a healthy change, you can safely move back your project to version 2 which is a stable release. You can restore your project to any stable version because you have enough information to see which files are stable and which files are not. This is called as version control system. Typically version control system works like this. You will have a central server where version control system is installed on which you have your project files and then you have your developers, let's say developer 1, developer 2, and developer 3. When developer 1 wants to make any changes, then he copies the files into his local system. He copies AC and changes it as AC1. Developer 2 copies AC, BC, and CC and made changes and modified the files as BC2 and CC2. Developer 3 also copies AC, BC, and CC and made changes to all of the files as at AC3, BC3, and CC3. Now, when these changes are done, Developer 1 copies the file AC1 into version control system and then AC becomes AC1. BC and CC will not be changed. Now, Developer 2 pushes his changes into version control system, the step 1, CC1, and these have the changes from Developer 2. Now Developer 3 pushes his changes into version control system. Then it says, boss, you are trying to submit your change, but you are working on an older version of these files. You are working on version 0 of these files because that is what he has downloaded from his system. Version control system identifies the files he has downloaded. Now developer 3 is not allowed to submit the change and the version control system says please update your versions to the latest one and then make your changes on the top of that so that you will not lose the latest versions here. Now developer 3 is aware of the changes made by the other developers so he cannot overwrite their changes or he cannot bypass these restrictions. Thus there is no other option apart from updating his work area with the new versions. He will download AC version 1, BC version 1, and CC version 1 and make the changes on top of it and then push it back to the version control systems and then the version becomes AC version 2, BC version 2, and CC version 2. Now here you can see the clear history of the versions. With the commit command, version control system also tells who is making what change and when the change was done. In the history, you can see this change was made by developer 1 on this date and this change was made by developer 3 on that particular date with this message. This is called version control systems. There are multiple kinds of version control systems. There is a centralized version control system in which there is a centralized server where everybody will download from there and everybody will push their changes to there. Then there is distributed version control systems where this version control system have some files AC, BC, and CC. Developer 1 downloads the entire version control system on his machine and developer 2 as well download the entire version control system. Let's say this as developer 3. Now developer 1's version control system interact with developer 3's version control system and developer 3's version control system can interact with developer 1's version control system similarly for developer 2 also. 
Developer 2 can interact with Developer 1 version control system, and Developer 1 can interact with Developer 2 version control system. It looks a bit chaotic, but it is highly efficient. An example of centralized version control system would be SVN Perforce. An example of distributed version control system would be Git. In our DevOps course, we are going to learn about Git, Git architecture, and its commands. We are going to learn about Git process of the work area, staging, commit, and then push. We will also learn about remotes and see how we can run some porcelain commands. In Git, we have two kinds of commands, plumbing commands and porcelain commands. Plumbing commands are for high-level commands like commit and push. Porcelain commands are low-level commands where you actually work with Git data, garbage collection, packing the older commits, and all these come in porcelain commands. We are going to learn all these in our DevOps certification course and also how to integrate Git with Jenkins. You will also learn how it is used in implementing our DevOps continuous integration and deployment pipeline. Thanks for watching our video. Stay tuned for more DevOps videos.